Hi everyone, it's Matt Armstrong from The Pen Habit. I'm glad to be back for another video today. I've gotten a lot of requests to do some more reviews of some less expensive pens. Um, as many of you know, if you've watched my, sh my, uh, my videos, I do tend to like pens a little bit more on the expensive side. Um, I like some of the unique designs. I like some of the unique materials. Um, and I've had some pretty bad experiences with some lower end pens. Uh, pens people really like. Pens like the Lamy Safari, which I am not a fan of, and the Pi Pilot Metropolitan. And in, in the budget end of fountain pens, there seems to be a much more limited range of pens to pick from. Now, you know, that's, it's not always the case. There are some good ones out there. So there are some where I've just gotten what appear to be duds. Um, so the next several videos are actually going to be about pens on the on the more budget range of things. I, in looking at the pens I've got, I don't think I have a single pen that costs more than $35 in the next five videos I'm going to be doing. So uh, wanted, to, uh, wanted to let you know that that's coming up for a little while. I will have some other pens coming in the not too distant future as well. But uh, wanted to let you know that yes, Matt is going to review some some less expensive pens for those of you who aren't stupid enough to spend the kind of money on pens that I have over the last year and a half. So if you've watched my videos, this pen will probably look familiar to you. It is the Monteverde Impressa. It's a pen I like a lot. It made my top five last year, uh, which surprised even me. I wasn't expecting to like this pen at all. This looks a lot like a Monteverde Impressa. It is not. It is a Bauer 051. Now, Bauer is a Chinese company, B-A-O-E-R, um, that has, I don't know if Bauer manufactures the, the Monteverde for Monteverde, um, but this pen is nearly identical to them. This pen was $40. I love the finish. It writes like a dream. This pen was eight, shipped from China to the United States, shipping included. So there is, uh, I wanted to take a look at this pen, take a look at the differences and the similarities, and uh, spend a little bit of time focusing on, is it worth the money to get this pen, which I like so much, over this pen, and, uh, and if so, why or why not? So let's dive in, shall we? So this pen did not come in any packaging other than a thin plastic sheet or a plastic sheath um, came in a padded envelope from China, no box. So that's to be expected. It's a cartridge converter pen. Um, and let me just walk you through the design a little bit here. So much like, and I'm going to, most of this is going to be done side by side with the Impressa so you can see how the two of them fit together. So this is the Impress over here, the red and gunmetal color, and this is the Bauer on the left. So very similar top, square top, works its way down into a rounded body. Uh, if I pull the, put the pen side by side, you'll notice I'm actually going to zoom out just a touch here. So if I put the pens side by side, you'll notice that they're the same basic length, but there are a couple of minor differences. So the band here on the Bauer is wider than the band here on the Monteverde. The end piece is longer than it is on the Monteverde. Monteverde has two little bands that run in the pen. This does not. Um, both pens, if you turn them to the side, have very similar, if not identical, clips. Um, you know, and it's that same square on the top, works its way down to the rounded thing, relatively flush right here. If you feel the fit on this is, is just a little bit rougher than it is on the Monteverde, but not enough to be appreciable, appreciably noticeable. Uh, again, it's a pull top pen. Now, once you take the cap off, that's where things start to fall apart a little bit here. Um, in terms of the similarity. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in. Apologize for hitting the, uh, hitting the camera there. So the first main difference you'll notice is that the section 
on the Monte Verde is much long, or is, is a little bit longer and a little bit wider. It's also made out of the same metal as the body of the pen. The section on the Bauer 51 is thinner. It's made out of plastic. Then the other big difference, obviously, is the nib. The Monteverde uses a number six size nib, and the Impressa, or excuse me, the Bauer uses a number five size nib. Um, but the uh, the nib is just a kind of a generic, you know, it says Genius Iridium Germany, so it's an IPG nib. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with the Genius brand name, if that's even what it is. But in general, you know, I like the way you have to excuse the uh, ox blood drips on my hand here, the diamine ox blood drips. Yeah, I have not injured myself. <laughs> it's, it's just ox blood. Uh, so we've got the, um, the Monteverde fits very nicely in my hand. I like the way it feels. It's got a decent weight to it. The Bauer also fits nicely, but not quite as comfortably, just because the section is a little shorter and a little narrower, and because the nib is shorter. Now, I generally hold my pen like this. If the section and nib were a little longer, that would be great. But because it's not, I actually have to push it forward a little bit or adjust my grip. And sometimes I find myself holding it right here. Now, this is not sharp. It is a little noticeable, but it's not painful or anything like that. So you may have to, if you've got longer, longer fingers or larger hands, you may have to hold it a little bit further up the pen than on the section. But that's not necessarily the end of the world. Um... Cartridge converter pen, it does come with a converter, and it's a fairly inexpensive-looking standard international converter. Should use standard international long cartridges as well, I believe, although I haven't tried it, so if it doesn't, don't blame me. Um, in terms of the stats on the pen, this uh, is 138 millimeters long with the cap on, and 123 millimeters without. You can see here, fits fairly comfortably in the hand, so we're good there. Uh, you can post the pen, and it posts pretty securely, and it's 153 millimeters posted. And it's fairly comfortable in the hand when posted. Uh, it's not too long, and it's not too back heavy. It is nine millimeters in the middle of the section, which is a little bit narrower than I generally like, but still eminently usable. It's about 12.6 millimeters, both on the widest part of the barrel and on the cap. So it, it's, it's a fairly similar, you know, blending all the way to, until it starts to taper down here. In terms of the weight, this is a little bit heavier. Uh, it's 30 grams uncapped and 40 grams capped or posted. So it is a little bit on the heavier side. But as I mentioned, it's very comfortably balanced and... Uh, if, you, if you're a poster, I don't think you'll need to worry about this pen being too unbalanced. So let's talk build quality. I love my Monteverde Impressa. Like, I mean, I love it. It's one of my favorite pens right now. Um, I have heard from some people that it they are already starting to see chipping in the finish. I have seen just a tiny little bit of chipping on the, the black finish of the nib which you probably can't, oh, there you can see right there in the video. So there's just a tiny little bit of loss there in the, of the color on the nib itself. Now, I apparently am very, very easy on my pens because I don't have half the problems people complain about with pens that don't have high build qualities. My pens don't chip. I don't have a lot of scratches on the finish. I don't have problems with the cap. I, either I'm really lucky or I'm just gentle with my pens. I'm not sure which. Um, I've not seen any of those on the Monteverde. In addition, the folks who, there are some folks who have said the Impressa does not write well for them out of the, out of the box. Again, I didn't have that problem. I didn't have to touch this pen. I didn't smooth it. I didn't increase the wetness. I didn't adjust the tines. It worked beautifully right out of the box, and I've really liked it. I also bought this pen to give to my father. He had the same experience. So take that for what it's worth. The Bauer, uh, thus far, and I haven't had it for very long, so I don't know how this will work in the long term, feels very similar in build quality. It's, it's solid. The, the click on the cap doesn't feel quite as secure as it does on the Impressa. The threads, because it's plastic meshing with metal, don't feel quite as nicely made or quite as tightly fit. 
Um, but other than that, it it feels fine. And the one thing I would like to point out is this feed is a little, this reminds me more of older style feeds. It doesn't have any fins on the bottom of it. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting feed. I've not seen a lot like it. In any case, that's, uh, it's a nice pen for eight. It's, it's a nice pen and it's a really nice pen for eight bucks. Uh, you know, if, if you just don't have the $40 to spend on an Impressa, uh, go for a Bauer. Now I will say that again, this is one of my just personal pet peeves. It's not necessarily anything wrong about it, but Unless Bauer made a deal with Monteverde or vice versa to use the same design, I have a problem with one company stealing another company's design and, and using it as their own. So just on principle, because this is the pen I am familiar with and that I saw first, uh, I, would be, I would tend to go toward this pen even though it is more expensive. Uh, and I find I can get much better service. If something's wrong with this pen, I can return it to the to the retailer I buy it from here in the United States. If something's wrong with this pen, I'm out. But I'm only out $8, so it's not that big a deal. But if Bauer stole the design from Monteverde, shame on Bauer. And if Monteverde stole the design from Bauer, A, I don't, I don't think they did. My hunch is Bauer probably made the pen. Monteverde asked them if they could use the design and make some tweaks to it and call it a different pen. So. That's my guess on how it happened. I don't know for sure. All I know is they're very similar pens, and I wanna show you how the Bauer writes now so you can see how this goes in comparison to, uh, to my earlier video review of the Monteverde Impressa. So here we go. Okay, so the pen for today is the Bauer 51, 051 technically. We are using a steel nib. And I don't know for sure, but this feels like a medium nib to me. The ink is Organics Studio Arsenic, which is a gray ink. And I don't normally use gray inks, but someone sent this to me as a sample and I thought I'd give it a try. And we're on a Rhodia dot pad, as you can tell from the fact that it's Rhodia and it has dots. All right, so the quote for today, let me just get my little paper here, make sure I'm writing it correctly. Okay, so this nib writes very well. I've done no work to it. Um, it's much smoother than I was expecting and much smoother than I've seen on most of the Chinese nibs. Now, just because I got a good one doesn't necessarily mean you will. General rule of thumb is with inexpensive pens, one person's success does not equal another person's success necessarily. Quality control is going to be lower, hand work on these nibs is going to be lower. Chances of you getting a bum nib are just as high as chances of you getting a good one. So just because I had a good experience, don't assume you will too. Um, generally on higher end pens, you can say, well, if one person, lots of people had good experiences, then you're pretty safe. But on, on some of these less expensive pens, you just don't necessarily know what to expect. Um, in terms of the wetness on the pen, it's not, very wet. And, you know, as I mentioned, I haven't done any adjustment to it. I will. Um, I want to, I like doing these videos without adjustment, but I'm eventually going to adjust this nib. I will probably smooth it just a touch, not very much. And I'm going to increase the wetness a bit. And for videos on how to do that, search online from Stephen Brown or 
Brian Goulet or whomever, they've already showed you how to do it. I don't want to repeat what they have already so graciously instructed. Um, so it's not a terribly wet pen, but it, you know, it's, it's fine. It's, it's nothing spectacular. Um, in terms of line variation, you can push the nib a little bit, but you can see like right there, I got just the tiny little hints of railroading. This pen, it's just not a very flexible nib. So you shouldn't, you know, be too concerned with that on this pen. It's also a number five size nib and, uh, and it's a stainless steel nib. It's not going to be very flexible. Upside down writing or reverse writing, as I have heard it called, uh, it actually writes quite nicely upside down. And uh, it's a slightly finer line, but not as fine as some. So I would consider this maybe a, a finer medium, and this would be a finer fine, like a, a Japanese style medium and a Japanese style fine. Um, but it works just fine, no pun intended. So overall, um, it's a nice little pen. For eight bucks, it's a really nice little pen. Um, I would put this pen in my mind kind of in the same realm as the, the Jinhao X450, which I also have and which is right in the same price range. I actually think this feels a slight bit more refined than a Jinhao X450, if you're familiar with those. The nib is nice uh, and it looks to be a standard number five size nib. So theoretically, you should be able to, uh, to swap it out with, for instance, I know Edison sells number five size nibs. Uh, that you could probably swap out with this. Uh, and you can find them in a, in a few other places as well. But it's a nice pen. Uh, am I as gaga about it as I am my Impressa? No, I'm not. Uh, I like the Impressa a lot more. I like the number six st style nib. And just in, in comparison to the wetness, I mean, this, this pen is just so much wetter and so much smoother. Um, across the board. I, I just like the way this writes a lot more and I like the way it feels in my hand a lot more. But for, for eight bucks, shipping included, it's pretty darn good for the price. So that has been my review of the Bauer 051 or 051. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please like or subscribe as always. Check out all the social media links, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And thank you again for watching. We will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.